Hello and welcome back to this uh, BricsCAD BIM training. Um, today we'll talk a bit about exporting and importing. So I'll start with some, um, actually I'll start with opening the file that's in the folder collaboration. So if you have the training starter files collaboration folder, I'll just open the final model here. So it's a simple house with some components inside and I will hide the roof temporarily to show you something about importing. Um, first of all, since V19, we support a basic form of RFA import. So Revit families can be imported inside BricsCAD BIM. Um, now I say limited support, that's because we don't um, support the import of geometric constraints. So let's say you have a, a window family and it has different heights and widths you'll only be able to import one um, geometric object without having the, the height and width constraints. However, you can constrain them afterwards yourself. Um, one way to do so is by clicking BM insert or uh, insert on the, the home tab of the ribbon and browsing to an RFA file. But actually an easier way to do, the, to do so is to add them, especially if you, if you have a lot of them, to add them to your components panel. So what you can do is if you go to a components panel and click manage libraries, you can click here um, the little, little three dots that says components directory path and add a new path here. So we'll add a path that points to a location that has these um, RFA files. So in this case, we, we delivered some, R, some RFA files here in this collaboration IKEA folder. So I'll just select this IKEA folder and click OK. And now these folders should appear in my uh, components library. Let's say, for instance, here the sofas. There is one sofa. And I can simply drag and drop it into my drawing. And this will be converted to DWG automatically. Uh, for some reason, it's. Yeah, there it is. Okay. But again, I can't change the width or height, for instance, of this, this sofa um, unless I parameterize it myself which I can do by clicking um, open copy and save it as a new DWG and then parameterizing it as we saw in an earlier section of the training. Uh, it's also possible to import IFC files. Um, for this we'll have to use the import tool. So I'll click import and go to the collaboration folder there's this NBS folder that should contain an IFC file just of a component. Um, now when we insert it or import it, it will be automatically imported at the origin. So we still have to replace it manually. Like this for instance. And obviously, um, export to IFC is also possible. So let's say, I'll just show everything again. I'll just click export to IFC. Click the entire model. Um, we can choose between IFC 2x3 or IFC 4. I'll save it to my desktop. And when I open this IFC file with any IFC reader or viewer, I should be able to see everything that we had in the drawing there. There it is. Voila. I'll now give you a short demo of uh, what else is possible using, for instance, BCF panel or the 24-7 panel. 
Um, the, reason, the reason I'm just showing it to you, um, and it's not, not really a follow along exercise, is because um, you would need access to a BCF server um, to be able to, to, to follow along to this. So um, if you have access, feel free to try out the BCF panel yourself. If you don't, you can always find a BCF service like um, BIM Collab, for, for instance, or a BIM Sync. Um, and you can try to join for free. I'm not sure what the, um, if they have free registration possibilities. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll just show you what's, what's possible. Um, first of all, I'll just focus again a bit on IFC. Um, we have this example here of uh, the West building that we covered in an earlier exercise already as well. Um, and the first thing I want to show you is the custom property. So obviously, if you make custom properties, you can um, assign them to objects. And then when you uh, export to IFC, of course, these custom properties will also be uh, exported with it. So in this case, we're adding a custom property for Windows. Um, actually, one set with two properties inside it. One of them is cost. And the other, fun, other one is uh, manufacturer. Okay, so now let's take this window here. In the properties panel, we will see these properties appear. We can add some values to it. Let's say a value of, uh, let's, uh, let's say 5,000 euros. And let's enter manufacturer information as well. Now, of course, if we export this file to an IFC, so again, we have two options. We have either 2x3 or IFC4. In this case, we'll take 2x3 and uh, we'll export it. If we now open this with any IFC viewer, we should be able to see these custom properties available as well. So let's select our window here. I think it's the other one. And we see here 5,000 euros, Manufacturer Brixis Window Inc. Um, now here we have an example of another IFC file. It's actually the same building, but just a steel structure. And the interesting thing about this IFC file is that there, is a, there are BCF issues associated with it. So um, I will import this IFC file into a new uh, Brixis drawing, uh, a new empty drawing. Zoom extends to find the, uh, the model itself. Now, of course, uh, as I already mentioned before, good thing about importing using BricsCAD BIM is that you can just start modeling uh, with the imported geometry as if it was just made within BricsCAD BIM. So there's no restrictions there, really. Uh, that was just a quick example. Now we'll just open the BCF panel. So it's a little uh, hairpin icon. And we can either import the BCF file or connect with a service. So in this case, I will log in with BIM Collab. Um, this is actually kind of a playground that we have to test some things within Brix Brixis. And we see there's one project, Brixis NV, which has 14 issues in total. If we click it, we see all of these issues um, listed. And when we click an issue, we'll see more information. So we can show, show more details here. Uh, the priority, the assignee created by, created on, some comments and also some screenshots. So if you click the screenshot, automatically you will be taken to, um, to the location of the issue. In this case, there's an issue that the structural connection between these, these members is not worked out in a high level of detail enough. So uh, in this case, I have already a detail prepared that we can just drag and drop into our drawing. So. In this detail, it's a um, hinged connection between these, these members here. And when I click Propagate, it will search for all of the locations where this detail can be applied. Um, so in just a few seconds, it should 
yeah, find all of these locations. It gives us, in this case, eight suggestions of where it can be applied. We can choose whether to accept all of them or turn them off. In this case, I just accepted them. Um, and you can see this uh, detail has been applied. Now we can say, okay, this uh, issue has been resolved, so I can add the comment. Uh, we can add a screenshot if we want to, just like this, and save this comment. It will be then saved in this BCF issue. Um, and of course, since we're synced with the server, if we now go back to our BCF, um, online we will find that these uh, issues have been updated properly. Okay, there's one final thing I want to show you, and that's uh, about the 24-7 panel. So as some of you already know, uh, Brixis also develops their own um, cloud collaboration platform called Brixis 24-7. Um, basically, this is the interface when you log in. If you have access to certain uh, projects, you can just enter the project and see what's going on inside that project. Now, this up till now, this was basically all done in the browser. There's also an app since recently. And we also have made a connection within Brixis, Brixis itself, BrixCAD itself, sorry. So I have your BrixCAD uh, open. Um, there's the 24-7 panel that we can open. It's the little cloud icon. Again, if you don't find it, right-click, panels, uh, Brixis 24-7. So when I click it, I can log in with my credentials. I will first of all see these same projects that I have access to. So it's the same as the, the start page on, uh, on the browser. When I enter a project, I can uh, see the folders inside. Um, let's say I open a folder. And I can see in this case, actually, all of my files are up to date. So you can download, upload files, lock and unlock them. Um, you can sort by status, lock, uh, things like this. It's actually all pretty straightforward. So there's a live connection between a folder on your system and the, uh, the cloud. The folder is, is placed in your uh, documents, works is 24 seven, and then a local folder, which is basically a copy of the, uh, the cloud files. And as soon as you download something, it will become come in that folder and you can open it from there. Um, that's basically all I wanted to show you. So pretty much straightforward to use this panel. Um, okay, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you for uh, watching and uh, good luck. <laughs>